Welcome. This video was originally a lot longer and more in-depth and technical in some parts, but it didn't feel like it would suit the YouTube audience because some parts dragged on a little bit. After I watched it back and had Will watch it as well, we both came to the conclusion that it needed to be way shorter and snappier for the YouTube cut. But if you're interested in what that original cut looked like, it'll be available on Patreon if you're intrigued. But I feel really good about tonight's video in its final form for you too. I hope you enjoy it. some time since I looked at Intel HD graphics and an opportunity has uh, presented itself. So Will and I are both doing a used PC build for our next video. Will's got his PC and I've got mine. But while I'm waiting for a graphics card, I'm face to face again with Intel HD graphics, albeit a much newer iteration than the one in my old Bay Trail Dell. That Bay Trail DPC had acceptable performance, but it was nothing to really write home about. Because from memory, Left 4 Dead's really about the only game that ran reasonably on my last Intel HD graphics only computer. However, after looking at the specs of the Gen 9.5 Intel HD graphics in the Coffee Lake chips, and of course while waiting for my graphics card, I've become curious. How many games can you run on these Coffee Lake chips with no other graphics? Because for me, the scenario comes to mind. Let's say you find a cheap ultra small form factor PC, one of those ones that, uh, you know, it's really has no PCI slot, you can't really easily add a graphics card to. And you're wondering whether it will play enough of your games. Or maybe you've been given a laptop that has a Coffee Lake chip and you're wondering what kind of games you're going to be able to play on it and in what settings. Well, I think it's a good question to answer. So, tonight you don't need to wonder anymore because we're going to take this Coffee Lake chip and put it through a true suite of games. We're talking everything from easy to run games like Left 4 Dead to intense games that it has absolutely no business running. So if that sounds good to you, why not get yourself a cup of tea Whoa! as I get smashed by the tank <laughs> or a beer if that's more your thing and come along for the ride. introduce you to tonight's test subject, which I've nicknamed the Coffee Lake Dell. We scored this little beast for an absolute steal at a thousand Swedish krona on Facebook Marketplace. Have a look at the prices there in other currencies. That's a bloody steal for an i5-8500 Coffee Lake chip. 
While I call it the Coffee Lake Dell, you can call it the Dell Optiplex 3060 Slim Form Factor Model. While this PC may be small in size, it more than makes up for it in its specifications. As I said, it's an i5-8500 at 3 GHz with 6 cores, and being a Coffee Lake chip, it still packs a serious punch. Graphics is coming from the inside with the Intel UHD 630 GPU, the subject of tonight's video. This GPU can go from 300 to 1.1 GHz. With 24 execution units compared to the 4 of my old Bay Trail DPC, I am excited to see what this UHD GPU can do. It's part of Generation 9, or 9.5 technically, of Intel's iGPUs. It'll do DirectX 12 and up to 64 gigs of RAM, if you've got the RAM to spare. In terms of the RAM for this PC, we haven't changed too much. It's the stock SK Hynix 8 gig RAM. Nothing fancy, it's what came with the Dell. What is really nice though, is that this Dell came stock with an SK Hynix 256 gig SSD. As you can see from the numbers there, this SSD is nothing special, but having an M2 SSD built in was such a score, especially at the price we paid for this PC. To store our games on, we've borrowed a Seagate solid state hybrid drive from Will's stash downstairs. 500 gigs is plenty for the games, and though the speeds are nothing crazy, it'll do well holding our Steam library. So, without further ado, what you came for. Let's strap in and get right in to the benchmarks.
When I started this video, my ambition was to answer two questions. One of them was external. The question I wanted to answer for anyone who viewed this video. And that one was, can you game on Intel's UHD 630 graphics? The other question was more internal. How much better has Intel HD graphics become since my last PC that was based on that graphics chip? To answer that question very quickly, I was blown away by how much better Intel HD graphics has become. From being sort of just playable at a reasonable resolution in Left 4 Dead on my old PC, to becoming a really fantastic gaming experience on this newer PC. However, the next question, the other one was a little more complicated. Can you truly game on UHD 630? Well, it depends on where your expectations are. If you're willing to lower the settings, if you're just wanting a PC that's a spare around the house to play a couple games on, and you're not expecting anything crazy, you can certainly play a lot of games on UHD 630. If a PC comes onto your radar that has just the UHD 630 GPU, and it's not necessarily easy to add another GPU, like one of these thinner client machines that there are lots of out there, then UHD 630 can actually play a lot more games than you think. Maybe a PC to have spare for the next LAN party, so someone can play Overwatch with you. Maybe a PC to just run some lighter games on from the Xbox 360 days. If that's your ambition, then you can certainly go for one of those PCs and have a really good time. But the honest truth is that these Coffee Lake chips do their best with discrete graphics. Throughout this video, you could see that the CPU was barely stressed and the GPU was what was holding us back. So while UHD 630 has potential and has certainly come a long way, you're always better with discrete graphics, even the most basic card. And I know those among you who are technical are probably watching this thinking, Thanks, Captain Obvious. Of course, a graphics card is better than integrated graphics. But I feel that this video has at least answered my question of how good these UHD 630 GPUs can be. I've seen things that I didn't expect I would see. And I hope you have too. I hope I've answered the question, can you game on Intel UHD 630? And if you're sitting there thinking, damn it, Tim, put a bloody graphics card in this PC, then I hope you're subscribed, because in our next episode, we're going to do just that and put it up against another PC. So thanks again for watching and good night. into the HD preset however are uh, not the same story. Slightly higher average than driving, uh, which is interesting. I wish you do get a dip all the way down to 39, uh, but it's reasonably stable and very, very playable. Mm -hmm.